Today we're reviewing the Razor Wolverine V2 Chroma. It's kind of like the Razor Wolverine Tournament and Ultimate, but it's not. It's cheaper, and you can feel that. The rear buttons, they're there. They work. Are they the most comfortable? No, you'll have arthritis after a couple weeks. She's wired, so you'll be getting tangled up, but overall, a pretty good controller, and it has mechanical switches that are oh so satisfying to click. Let's get it, boys. So the Razer V2 Wolverine Chroma, interesting naming convention over there at Razer, almost as wonky as Microsoft with their Xbox line. This should technically just be called the Wolverine 2, but they've been throwing the word Chroma in there with a lot of their recent products, as it is their marketing name for their RGB, and yes, indeed, this controller does have RGB. This does use a different shell design, so it is ergonomically different in your hand than a standard Xbox One controller, which is different than a lot of other premium and custom controllers out there, such as Scuf, Hex Gaming, AIM, that actually start with a licensed Xbox controller, so it has that identical shell and ergonomic shape. As you can see, this has to be tilted almost flat in the stand here, as where a regular Xbox One controller will stay perfectly like that. But this is very rounded on the bottom, and also the shell feels a little bit more rounded and sculpted, and you do have this rubberized material on the side, which does feel very good. It will take a slight amount of getting used to, but then I think this will be comfortable for most standard North American hands. Now I have tested the Razer Raiju for PS4, as well as the Razer Wolverine Ultimate and Tournament, and compared the two on this channel, and this is the direct successor of the Wolverine lineup for the Xbox One. This is a wired only controller. It does come with six additional buttons, mechanical tactile switches, swappable thumbsticks, trigger stops, RGB lighting, rubberized grips, and a software suite that you can install on both the PC as well as the Xbox via the Microsoft Store. Now, in my opinion, this is a very interesting controller considering it has some very strong pros going for it, but it also has quite a few shortcomings. The most notable one is actually gonna be this rear button design back here. Now, I have heard people call these paddles. Technically, on this controller, these are buttons, but hey, same, same. You also do have onboard control for your 3.5 millimeter headphone jack, which is nice. So getting the pros out of the way right up front. First of all, the thumbsticks. I do like the four included thumbsticks. It would be nice to see six swappable thumbsticks considering most other premium controllers on the market do include six swappable thumbsticks, but hey, four is better than nothing. But it would be nice that they at least had a high domed in there because a lot of players do prefer a convexed over concaved. But overall, the thumbsticks feel very good, a nice resistance to them. I do like the included thumbstick caps because they are substantially wider than most other controllers on the market, which actually does give you a lot of precise accuracy and control, which I like. You do also have anti-friction rings around the outside of the thumbsticks, so it'll glide along smooth plastic rather than the rough plastic of the front shell. I am also a huge fan of the mechanical buttons that they use in the D-pad, face buttons, bumpers, and these two additional buttons up here. Take a listen. So as you can hear, it sounds just like a mouse click, and this actually has three benefits. First of all, durability, as most mechanical switches, for example, in a gaming mouse or keyboard, are rated for between three to five million clicks, so more than you're gonna get out of standard membrane or rubber plunger buttons. Not to mention, these are incredibly fast. It's touted all over their website, and besides a marketing gimmick, it actually is true in practice. As soon as you press these buttons with the required amount of force or pressure to act activate the switch, it instantaneously activates and you get a nice tactile click that you can not only audibly hear but also gives you a little bit of feedback on your thumb so you know that you have actually cleanly hit the button it's just very very nice i said there was a third reason and there is i just can't think of it right now so i'll probably drop it down there in a pinned comment in the description down there below i really do like the bumpers i do like the shell design i think it is incredibly ergonomic i will have the measurements or dimensions of an xbox controller right here and then the measurements or dimensions of the wolverine right here now, as for what I do not like, the shortcomings, the cons, and the Achilles heel of the Razer Wolverine V2 Chroma. First of all, the build quality does feel quite a bit cheaper than the previous Wolverine Tournament and Ultimate, and they did that to save cost. And that cost saving has been passed over to the consumer, as this does retail for, I want to say, $30 cheaper than the original Wolverine Ultimate. But you definitely feel that in some of the cheap plastics and whatnot. And it just feels incredibly light. Part of that is due to the fact that it is wired, so it doesn't need all the uh, wireless, it doesn't need all the wireless chipset and adapter inside of it and all that. But also, it only has vibration in the palms, not in the triggers. Me personally, I do like those little vibration motors in the triggers because 
In Microsoft Studio first party games, they actually make really good use of those to where whichever gun you're shooting, whichever hand, it'll be vibrating in that trigger. And when you hit the brake in a racing game, it kind of judders on your fingertip. It's not as accurate as something like the PlayStation 5 DualSense haptic feedback, but it does feel good. So you're not getting that with this here. However, the Rumble Force motors are rather aggressive in the palms. I also do not like the triggers whatsoever. And this is for three reasons. One, I mentioned cheap plastics and you definitely feel that on the triggers here. There's no grip or texturing on them. Two, the angle that they're cocked at, they are very aggressively swooped forward. So it actually just feels kind of weird on your finger. Tips. The next one would be the included trigger stops do hardly anything. They cut out about 40% of the trigger pull. It just doesn't feel like they do much. I leave them on constantly unless I'm playing a racing game, but they're just not the best trigger stops. I'm glad they have them. It's a nice little feature. Yeah, not great. Next up, I do not like the fact that you have to install a third party application on either your PC or your console in order to remap the bindings, control the thumbstick dead zones, or RGB lighting. You don't have any control on board of that. Almost every other premium controller on the market, Scuff, Aim, Hex Gaming, etc., allows you to remap the paddles on the fly so you don't need to close out your game and go into an application. Not to mention with the Elite 2, you do have to use an application, but it's a Microsoft licensed product, so it's integrated right there in your Xbox settings. It's very easy. As with the app for this, it's a little bit clunky. Sometimes it doesn't recognize the controller on first plug-in and a lot of times it's a little bit laggy as well, which I did not like. Two more cons I'm adding in post editing. The share button actually does not function as it should. What it does is only takes a screenshot. Now with any other controller, whether it's a licensed regular standard Xbox controller, scuff, aim, hex gaming, etc., the share button works just like it's set up a standard Xbox controller. However, on the Razer Wolverine, I don't know if it's because it's wired or what, whether I press the share button, double tap it or hold it down, all it does is take screenshots. So if I wanna save gameplay footage, which I do for YouTube videos, and whatnot, what I have to do is press the Xbox home button and then press the concurrent button to save the gameplay clip, which is dumb. That was the whole reason that with the Xbox Series controller over the Xbox One, they added that little share button. It's a feature that's been with Sony since the PlayStation 4, and it just doesn't work on the Razer Wolverine. The second one would be the ergonomics. It is a comfortable controller for bigger hands. However, if you have average or small hands, you are gonna prefer a standard Xbox One shell, which is what virtually every other premium controller on the market uses. They start with a licensed Xbox shell, so it's the same shape, dimensions, not so much weight because they have different internals, but the Razer uses its own molded shell and it's okay, but if you hold an Xbox One controller and then immediately grab the Razer and go back and forth, you're going to notice that the Wolverine is pretty much only comfortable for large hands. If you have medium hands, it's okay. It's not uncomfortable, but it is not as comfortable as an Xbox One controller. IMO, you got to put that little period at the end of the sentence to caveat it, but it's pretty much fact, but it's also my opinion, but it's true and it's fact. And most importantly, I think the biggest downside would be this rear button design here. It isn't terrible by any means. In fact, they are not removable. However, when you do not need to use them because you're playing a game like Crash Bandicoot or a racing game or something, you can just hold it regularly like you would any standard controller and the paddles, the rear buttons aren't even in the way. But when you do need them, you extend your fingers out and you can cover all four paddles simultaneously, relatively comfortably. But this isn't the most comfortable thing. It, it looks pretty ridiculous on camera, but uh, you know, I've actually gamed like this for several hours and didn't really cause any fatigue or anything. It just isn't the best rear button design. And I do hope that Razer does a little bit more R&D or research and development with their next version and uh, reworks this paddle design. And there's two more issues with it. First of all, the plastics are substantially cheaper and the switches in their field just clunky and mushy, which is shocking because they use beautiful mechanical tactile switches in their face buttons, D-pad, bumpers, these two buttons up here. But then with the rear buttons, which people are gonna be using probably more than the face buttons, to be honest, because this is an eSports controller, um, they're just these cheap, hollow plastic. It does not feel good. And it's actually a step back from the previous Wolverine Ultimate and Tournament, as it does feel like the plastics are a lot cheaper back here. And then it has this little pattern here, but that does nothing for grip whatsoever. These are incredibly slick, and I wish that they would use some kind of a, a rubberized pad or something that gives your fingers a little bit of grip when you're on these back buttons here. And the last one is, I'm gonna list this as a con because it is for me personally. However, a lot of people, this isn't a big deal whatsoever, and that is the fact that this is wired. Now, me personally, if I'm playing at the PC, of course, I'm gonna be wired, but if I'm in a casual console environment, i.e. sitting back in bed with my console or on the couch in the living room, it's good to have that option, the versatility, of being wireless, considering all wireless controllers can be played wired via plugging in through a USB-C cable, but you have the option of being wireless. Now, 
This isn't Razer trying to be cheap or cut costs or anything. They do not have the licensing or a partnership with Microsoft. Unlike Scuf, Hex, AIM, some of the wireless controllers that I've tested on this channel that do just sync up directly like an Xbox controller, um, Razer being a third party company, they actually do not have a partnership with Microsoft to go wireless. So hopefully that changes in the future because if they had a wireless version of this controller, and that would earn big brownie points for me personally. Also another pro, I actually do like the Xbox button up here. It's kind of raised in a bumpy fashion and also it does take a good amount of resistance to press it. I also do like the placement of these two accessory buttons and the share button as this is designed for the Xbox series. It does have that share button so you can quickly save your gameplay footage and screenshots, which is cool. Alrighty Stallions, in here in the living room on the Xbox Series S and I do have an application installed that you will need to control any of the software features of this controller. I'm not a huge fan of that considering all other third party controllers Scuff, Aim, Hex Gaming, just to name a few of them on the wall over there. They allow you to remap the back paddles on the fly or without any software program on the PC or the console. And with the Microsoft Elite, you cannot remap on the fly, but the application is already integrated with the Xbox software. You literally just go to accessories and it's right there and it's kind of integrated with the console itself. As for this, there's a third party application you need to download from the, the Microsoft store on the console. Don't like that. It doesn't make sense why you can't remap the paddles on the fly. And a lot of times this happens over here as you can see clear as day from the RGB this controller is plugged in I was just playing Halo Infinite with it but it doesn't recognize it so what you got to do let's go ahead and unplug her plug her back in easy peasy squeezy lemon as they say so we're going to edit this profile over here and I'm going to show you some of the features of this software suite over here so obviously you can remap the buttons make sure I'm not blocking the TV here so you've got assigned buttons over here this is going to be the remapping for the four rear buttons as well as these two top buttons up here which are basically secondary bumpers which I really do love that you have six additional buttons with this am I going to use all those probably not I use four paddles daily because I like to remap all the face buttons to the rear paddles. However, you can remap a couple of the D-pad arrows up here or L3 and R3 if you wanna save your thumbsticks or God knows whatever else. Uh, you do also have thumbstick sensitivity over here, but in order to engage this, you will need to turn on sensitivity crutch, which basically is a button that you will press either one of these rear paddles or one of these top buttons, and it'll make your sensitivity of the right or left analog stick either faster or slower. So if you're, you pick up a sniper rifle in game or something and you need some very precise slow movements, you can hold down whatever button you have mapped to that and it'll cut down your sensitivity. I personally don't like that. I would like to just actually fine tune my thumb work to be a little bit more precise considering you do have a higher right analog stick here so you can just barely move it if you just need to aim precisely. I'm not a huge fan of that because basically muscle memory, your mind has to get used to having two different sensitivities with the button off and then with it engaged. It's just confusing when you could just get better at aiming. Uh, dead zones over here, this is awesome. Now granted, so we got ourselves a firmware update, boys. Ooh, she is slow trickling too, okay. While it's doing that, I do like the fact that it has a dead zone adjustment built into the software considering most modern AAA titles and even third party games have an adjustment in the settings for dead zone because it's expected over time the Xbox and PlayStation controllers, they're going to adapt stick drift. Whether it happens four months or four years down the road, it most likely at one point or another will happen because the these thumbstick modules are cheap and mass produced. So the fact that you can just adjust it once in this app here and then not have to worry about setting it in each game, I think that's really cool. Like I mentioned, you cannot remap the rear or top buttons on the fly directly from the, the controller. However, what you can do is hold down this little circular button here and then use the D-pad up and down to adjust your headset volume and then left and right to adjust your game and chat blend. So that's nice to have that controllability over that 3.5 millimeter headphone jack. There's the layout of your dead zone adjustment. Very nice, very nice. Coming over here to vibration, there is just the vibration motors in the palms. However, they are very aggressive and very strong. So if you're somebody that likes an intense vibration, this controller will satisfy that urge for you. Uh, lighting over here, you do have four different RGB modes. By default, it's spectrum cycling, which I personally like. It is a slow fade through the spectrum. You can set breathing, which is gonna be up to two colors, basically pulsating in and then out. And then you have a static color if you want it on constantly at one color, maybe to match your theme or your setup. And then of course you have it off as well. Me personally, I like it on spectrum cycling and I do think the RGB lighting looks good. Granted, when you're holding it, it is gonna block a little bit of it here, but you still see it on the sides and down here at the bottom, which looks kind of cool. So this application is isn't terrible. I will say it is a little bit laggy sometimes where you plug in your controller and it takes a while to recognize it. And also just browsing the menus, it can be a little bit laggy where you click, you wait about 10 seconds and then it opens up the menu. So that's frustrating considering you have to use the software application to make any adjustments. Granted,
granted, once you get this thing dialed in the, the way you like it once, you're probably just gonna keep it like that unless you share this controller with somebody else. So what is my final verdict and do I recommend the Razer Wolverine V2 Chroma? Rename it, please. Well, I need to ask you a couple of questions first. I need your mother's maiden name, I need your blood type, and I need the last four of your social security. No, actually, do you play on PC or console? If you play on PC, again, you're right in front of the tower, so you don't have to worry about being wired. Okay, cool. You're on console. Do you mind being wired? No? Okay, let's keep moving forward. And if the 10 foot cable isn't long enough for you, I do also have a USB extension in the description below that has female on one end, male on the other, i.e. you can extend your cable to about a 21 footer. And that should be, unless you get a mansion or something, that should be enough for, for you to get from your console to where you're sitting. It's got some awesome features that other controllers don't have, i.e. those two extra buttons on the top and the fact that the D-pad, the face buttons, and those two extra buttons are mechanical. So that's cool. That's a pro but there's also some pretty big cons too this so the paddle or in this case rear button design is the most important feature and has to be absolutely stellar and it simply is not it is not removable you cannot remap them on the fly so if you switch games or something you have to launch a third-party application which a lot of times won't even recognize your controller okay kevin that's not a big deal shut your suckle and keep telling me how good the controller is the paddles generally do feel relatively comfortable but they are not the most comfortable in fact there's probably three or four paddle controllers that are savagely more ergonomically comfortable. Can you cover all four of them relatively comfortable? Yes, I've been playing Quantum Break and Titanfall 2 uh, for several hours with the Razer plugged into my Series S. I really didn't get sore in the knuckles from, it looks silly. You're holding your hands out like this. It looks ridiculous, but it really didn't feel that uncomfortable. That the actual switches they use are kind of sloppy and the plastics are cheap and chintzy and slippery. Why wouldn't they go with the same tactile, clicky mechanical switches that they use in their face buttons considering that that's fucking dumb because most people that buy this controller are hardly ever going to touch the face buttons. And it's sad because they're such great face buttons, but you're most likely going to have the face buttons remapped to the back paddles, which feel like you're fisting a jar of mayonnaise. They're not really that dissatisfying, but um, they're not great either. So overall, do I recommend this controller? I, no, not really. I don't not recommend it. It is a good controller, but it is not a great controller. And if you're already spending $150, there are better controllers out there now. What are they? What, what else is good out there, Kevin? Well, first of all, the Elite 2 is a kick-ass controller. It was having some quality control issues. However, the recent batch from the re the recent batches that have been leaving the Microsoft factory are going through a different QC or quality control process, and I have been hearing less and less cases of them breaking. Okay, well, I don't I don't like that, Kevin. It 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 it, it, it doesn't tickle me down there. Cool. Um, Aim makes a pretty damn good controller. The Scuff Impact Pro also pretty fucking good. The Hex Gaming Advance. And by the way, these are all linked in the description below. And I do have exclusive coupon or discount codes for my viewership, the Stallions, for the AIM and the Hex Gaming controllers. Okay, who would I recommend this controller for? Somebody that doesn't mind being wired, somebody that has big hands, and somebody that holds the controller before they buy it and they're like, oh yeah, this, this is a good paddle design. I think a lot of people are not going to like the way the, the paddles feel, having to have your fingers all the way extended out like that. And the, the, the shell is not as ergonomic or comfortable as a standard Xbox One controller. For, for standard North American hands, we got some long, skinny pianist fingers here. Um, it wasn't as comfortable for me. It's not a bad controller, but it's not a great controller. And if you're already spending 150 bucks, the Elite 2 can be had for around 180. And there's a lot of controllers in the 200 to 250 range. I know that's ridiculously expensive for a controller, but you're going to have it for years to come and you're going to be playing with it a lot. So you don't really want to cheap out on it either. You know what I mean? It's like buying a prostitute. Like why cheap out and have a, an unsavory experience? You know, that is going to do it, Stallions. If you enjoyed this honest controller review, liking it will help it to get seen by more gamers. This information will reach in a system as well and help them make a decision if the Razer Wolverine V2 Chroma is right for their needs or not. Subscribe for more content like this. I cover news in the gaming community and industry as well as tutorials helping you get set up streaming and YouTubing and honest gaming peripheral reviews, keyboards, mice, headsets, controllers, chairs, mics, etc. I'll see you tomorrow.